Hey everyone, my name is Carlos. I'm a web developer based in Boca, New York. And today I want to talk a little bit about what Backend is. Now, if you're new to the industry or experienced in the industry, you might have heard this term uh, thrown out a lot along with Frontend. You might have heard uh, Backend being described as what happens under the hood or all the functionality that makes a website work. But there's a lot more to it than that. So today I want to go a little in depth into what exactly is Backend and what entails making a website work. In the web industry, a lot of terms can be thrown out at you web developer, DevOps, UX designer, UI designer, but two terms that are thrown out a lot are front-end and back-end. However, in order to understand what back-end is, we must first have an idea of what front-end is and how they communicate with each other. Now, the front-end, which is also called the client side, is basically what happens in the browser. And this is everything the end user sees and interacts with. So this could be a login in page, a sign up page, a page listing products from a shop, or a site for a restaurant or a hair salon. Now, the back end, on the other hand, this is what happens on the server and the database. We also call this server side programming. And this is also the machinery that works behind the scenes. It's basically everything the end user doesn't see or directly interact with, but that powers what's happening. Now, to actually understand how they interact with each other, uh, we can look at an analogy called the restaurant analogy. Okay, so I want you to picture yourself walking into a restaurant. You're greeted by a hostess, and then you're sat down on the table and given a menu. And the menu itself will have uh, maybe a picture of the dish they have and maybe the title of the restaurant. And inside the menu, you're going to have pictures of items and descriptions of what the dishes are, maybe also the prices of them. So this is basically a static piece of content that should make it easy for customers to understand their options. And then from here, you can pick and select what you like and request an item with certain specifications. And this could be a hamburger with no onions or extra ketchup, for example. So I want you to picture this as a front end. So all the static content that's displayed on your website will be made up out of CSS, HTML, and then some type of JavaScript. So now let's look at the back end side of this picture. So just like in the front end and back end, the kitchen and chef are in a separate environment and it's hidden from the customers. The kitchen and chef can take the order that received from the waiter. And then from there, he can go into the cooler or the fridge and proceed to um, create the item that was requested and then cook it up and deliver it. So you can think of this as the back end, but there's one important element missing from this. In order for the kitchen and the front staff to interact with each other, there needs to be some sort of medium to communicate. So let's go ahead and see how that happens. Now you can't just shout out the menu and expect something to happen. You need a way to communicate that order to the kitchen staff. So in order for the front end and the kitchen to communicate, the medium will be a waiter or a server that will be in charge of sending information back and forth from the customer and the kitchen staff. And waiter and waitress can help on you understand the menu, answer any questions, and then take your orders to the kitchen staff. So they're basically experts in interactivity and understanding what you want to do. So in the back end side, we can consider the waiter as a server. So with this analogy in place, we have a better understanding of how front end and back end works. But let's go ahead and take a look at this in a more practical way. So just like our restroom, we can view the front end as what's displayed in front of the user, which is usually composed with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And we can view the back end as a combination of a database and a software written in a server site language, which both run on web servers or cloud-based servers or a hybrid combination of both. Now the server side application directly interacts with a database via an application programming interface, which pulls, saves, or changes data. So both the combination of the server and the database can be considered the backend. So let's look at an example that you might run into on a daily basis. So let's say you're trying to log in into Code Academy. You go ahead and you type in your email, your password, and then you click the button login. From there, the information will be sent to the server side software. And the server side software might have some data validation to make sure that the password field wasn't empty or maybe a .com was missing from the email. And then once everything is in order, the server side software will parse this data and send it to the database. So then we can check in the database if a user with that email password combination exists. We might just run a query and look for that user. And if it finds it, then it can grab the information from that user and send it back to the server. Now that user information might be a lot of information that we don't really need. So it might select what we need and then grab the certain information from it and then send it back to the client and then redirect them to his user profile page. So using the restaurant analogy again, you can think of the server as a waiter who is in charge of sending information back and forth. And the database can be the kitchen or the chef that's in charge of making the orders and making sure they're correct and then sending them back to the server so it can be delivered to the client. So now we have a better understanding of how backend works and what it involves. 
but let's look at examples on what a backend developer would do on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, a backend developer will have many responsibilities that involve working with databases and server-side software, but what are some examples of it? Well, for starters, the developer will have to be comfortable working with databases. You're going to be creating them, you're going to be integrating, you're going to be managing them a lot. Next, you're going to be working with uh, backend frameworks to build server-side software. Now, I'm going to touch a little bit more on what backend frameworks are in the following slides, so don't worry too much about that. Another example would be data validation. So you got to make sure that the information that is parsed has a correct format and it's um, being able to be um, sent properly to the database. Last thing, uh, you might want to be able to integrate user-facing elements with server-side logic. So remember that login page we had at the Code Academy site. We want to make sure that when we click that login button, that information is being set to the proper route so the server can actually retrieve it and send it uh, to the proper place correctly. So just keep in mind, these are just a few examples and the roles of a backend developer will, uh, they will change varying the scalability of the application you're building and what exactly is required. So now let's look at some of the actual technologies and software that backend developers use. So in order to, for a dynamic site to work properly, it requires a database, or you can consider this as like the brains. So all information like user profiles or images they've uploaded or blog posts are going to be stored in a database. And some examples of the database that are quite popular are MySQL, we got MongoDB, there's Oracle, which is very popular as well, and we have PostgreSQL. Now each of them have their nicks and cracks and advantages and disadvantages, so it's up to you to decide which one is best for the application. Next, let's look into the languages. Now, for the languages, we actually have quite a few to pick from, and they're used to implement logic into web applications, so you must be familiar with a server-side scripting language. We have Ruby, for example, which is great for building complicated logic on the database side of a site. We have Python, which has an emphasis on readability and simplicity, so it's great for beginners, and it's also very powerful and works well in object-oriented designs. There's PHP, which is one of the most popular server site languages on the web. PHP is designed to pull and edit information in the database, and it's mostly commonly bundled with databases written in the SQL language. Then we have Node, which is a program that allows the front end JavaScript language to be used in server side applications, uh, mostly used with a framework called Express. And we also have Java, which is an object oriented language similar to C but with advanced and simplified features. And Java is also free to access and can run on all platforms. Now, these are just a few I've mentioned. There's quite a few more that you can look into. But now let's look into frameworks. So what are frameworks? Frameworks are basically libraries of server-side programming languages that construct the backend uh, structure of a site. So it makes it easier to write, to maintain, and to scale web applications. And they provide us tools and libraries that simplify common web development tasks this can be like routing URLs through appropriate handlers, interacting with databases, supporting sessions and user authorization, or just formatting output and improving uh, security against web attacks. So a few examples of the frameworks we have are Ruby on Rails, Rails being the framework that is used with Ruby. We have a few with Python, one is Django, we have Flask as well, and we also have Express, which is one of the most popular ones that is used with Node. Now, if one is interested in learning back in uh, development, how do we actually get started? Well, there's many paths to the same destination, but I'm going to give you one simple progression you can take to actually start learning how to work with backend development. So first thing you're going to do is choose a language and a framework. Now, I listed a bunch of options in the previous slide, but there are more options to them. Uh, if you're familiar with maybe JavaScript and you did a little front-end development, it might make more sense for you to pick JavaScript and Express to work with. If you're unfamiliar with uh, programming, it may make more sense for you to pick a beginner-friendly language like Ruby or Python. Now, after you've picked a language and a framework and you become a little more familiar with the framework, then it's important for you to start learning how to serve simple content to the client. And a solid progression here might be learning how to send messages directly from your code to the client or sending contents of files from the server to the client or maybe even creating a template and programmatically filling in the holes with some type of generic data. So once you know how to send basic content, it's time for you to send content from different locations. And you can do this by learning APIs and HTTP methods. Now, if you're more curious about APIs, we provide another course, which is listed in the description. But the goal of an API here is to create an interface 
for an application to request some data from you such that it can do meaningful things in response to what it receives. Once you've learned all this, one of the last steps would be actually connecting to the database and being able to make that connection so you can actually retrieve data or update data or maybe create new data, like creating a new user, for example. And the last step would be to build something on your own. Uh, this is one of the best ways to actually learn back in development or any kind of other development you're interested in. Uh, just try to have a project in mind where you in, you're, where you implement both uh, the server and a database and maybe a simple front end logic to actually interact with it. Now back in development involves a lot of steps and there's a lot of stuff to take in into learning how back in development works. But uh, if you're curious, we have some of the courses provided from Code Academy listed in the description. Now with new technologies like React and Angular coming up and evolving over time, the difference between front-end and back-end kind of blend in a little bit more, but it's still important to know how they differ from each other. So hopefully this gave you a good idea of what back-end is. So thanks for watching everyone and join the conversation by subscribing to this channel or dropping a comment below. And if you want to take your skills to the next level, start learning at Code Academy today.